I'm Christopher Warnock of Renaissance Astrology, and today I'd like to talk about constellation talismans in general and our new constellation talismans uh, of the constellation Cetus, the sea monster or the whale. Um, so let me just start off a little bit on constellation talismans. You know, I think people are really comfortable with the idea of planetary talismans. They have sort of a sense of, you know, what the energy of the sun may be like, energy of Jupiter would be like, what the spirit of those planets, you know, what, what kind of effects they might get. Um, obviously, there's a lot to, to uh, learn about that, but we have really extensive lists of planetary rulerships in our traditional sources. Plus, you know, again, I think people are getting more and more familiar with astrology and then more and more a sense of what each of the planet's personalities are like. Uh, because I like to approach the, the, the astrological factors really as, as persons, as personalities. Um, so I think, though, increasingly in the astrological, you know, magic community, people are becoming more and more comfortable with fixed stars. Now, in the traditional geocentric uh, astronomy that's used in traditional astrology, you have the seven spheres of the planets, with the lowest sphere being the moon. So everything on Earth in the material plane is called the sublunary realm under the, under the moon. And then there's seven spheres um, higher and higher and higher to get to Saturn, which is the highest, the seventh sphere. Now, above that uh, sphere of the planets um, of Saturn, is the, depending on how it's conceptualized, it could be just one uh, sphere of the fixed stars or then the fixed stars plus the zodiac. But that next higher sphere is of the fixed stars. Um, and so, you know, again, people are becoming more and more familiar with the fixed stars. You know, for example, for protection, the fixed stars are really uh, prominently featured in our traditional sources. Uh, Algol, for example, the head of the Medusa, Antares, the, uh, the heart of, the, of Scorpio, um, Procyon. These are all fixed stars that are noted in our traditional sources as being good for protection. But, you know, we also have a, a fixed stars like Spica, which are good for uh, uh, it's basically the most benefic talismans, good for um, wealth, good fortune, um, all good things really. Um, uh, you know, uh, health like Capella, really a whole variety of different possible things that you can you can find with the, the fixed stars. Now our main source for the fixed stars is a manuscript called Hermes on the 15 fixed stars, um, rather than Picatrix, which is our typical, uh, you know, astrological grimoire for, for many purposes. Um, this uh, Hermes and the 15 fixed stars is the source for Cornelius Agrippa's three books of occult philosophy and contains the 15 what are called Bahinian or uh, 15 fixed stars that we have significant information about and what's nice about this source is it gives us a sigil it gives us an image it gives us the effects of the the fixed star talisman it gives us the rulership of the fixed star um, and gives really enough information to be able to interact with the spirit and to create the talisman. Now, my view is that every single fixed star, and there's about a thousand fixed stars uh, that are visible, uh, has a spirit and could potentially be invoked and used in a talisman. We just don't know enough about them. So that's sort of, a, you know, one of the quests. One of the things that I've done, probably the one the, uh, the, the few little pieces of original work that I've done, is uh, this fixed star Fomoha, which is, you know, something that's important in my chart, um, and my natal chart and uh, a, fi a fixed star that I worked with and sort of extended um, you know my my work to include that um, so you know as we're becoming more and more comfortable with fixed stars it sort of naturally leads to constellations so of the thousand fixed stars uh, they're arranged in 48 constellations there's the 12 uh, constellations or signs of the zodiac and then there's 36 uh, extra zodiacal constellations, so a total of 48. And um, these uh, extra zodiacal constellations um, are maybe less familiar with, than the signs, but nevertheless they're similar and that each of the constellations is made up of multiple fixed stars and it has an image or has an animal or picture or person or whatever that goes along with it. And, and, and often a lot of mythology that's uh, grown up around this particular constellation. So my practice is to work with the constellations in a talismanic way, uh, very similar to how I work with fixed stars. Um, so we have a little less information about them. We don't have as much information on the sigil. We can kind of uh, substitute the um, shape of the constellation as a sigil. Um, and uh, that's something we, we'll be seeing with, uh, as we look at, at Cetus. 
Um, then what I do is, for the fixed star, it's relatively easy because the fixed stars, even though they're in a 360 degree sphere of the heavens, are projected in traditional astrology onto the ecliptic and then are processed according to the procession of the equinoxes. So the apparent you know, uh, location of that fixed star, once focused on, the, or rather it's projected on the ecliptic, changes about one degree every 72 years. So obviously if you're out in space doing a heliocentric view, that would be different, but in the geocentric perspective that we're using, it's perfectly accurate. It's certainly exactly as you see it from the, from the Earth. Um, so, uh, but that's the perspective that we're using. And so uh, for a fixed star, it's relatively easy because you have uh, you know, a degree even to the minute um, where you can usually to degree is sufficient where you can have it rising. You know, for example, Algol's at 26 Taurus. So what you want to do is put 26 Taurus with Algol either rising um, on the eastern horizon or directly overhead at the midheaven. And that's the typical placement. And then you would have the moon applying um, the best as a conjunction, but it's also perfectly fine to have the moon applying to either a trine or a sextile. And then you don't want to have the fixed star or the moon afflicted, um, which is relatively simple, unless you have a, the south node, for example, sitting right on top of the fixed star or say, you know, a retrograde planet or a planet in fall or detriment or something like that, then there's really not much that afflicts them. I don't afflict them by um, uh, you know, other aspects like squares or oppositions, uh, so that's not problematic in the, in the methodology that I'm using. So when we do a, a constellation talisman, we sort of follow on from the fixed star example, and, but the problem then is, okay, wh what do we have rising or culminating? Because these constellations, uh, a fixed star is you know, going to be very small in terms of you know, looking at degrees, but a constellation can be very, very large. In fact, Cetus, that we're going to talk about later, is an extremely large constellation. It's the fourth largest of all the constellations. So my practice is to go ahead and pick a marker star. And so I look for a fixed star in the constellation that's you know, more or less halfway through in the middle of the constellation, and then I have that fixed star rising or culminating. Now, um, again, this doesn't come from a traditional source. It just seems like a logical thing to do because we want to have, our traditional sources do say to have that, that constellation rising or, or culminating. So how do we do that? The fixed star or the marker star seem to be a good way to do that. Now, other people have said use the beginning of the constellation. The problem with that is it can be, as a practical matter, difficult to figure out exactly where the boundary of the constellation is. That's the same problem we have with the, the what they call the age of Aquarius that people talk about. We have these procession of the signs, it takes 26,000 years in the great year, and so the, each sign is going to be you know, starred about every 1,200 years or so, but when, that depends on the boundary, and it's very hard to figure out what those boundaries are. So that's a little bit problematic. It's, it's logical, but sort of problematic. Another thing I've had people say is to say, oh, you want to use the, 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 the brightest fixed star, the alpha star. Um, which is also an interesting approach, but then what you're doing is you're first approaching that fixed star, so to speak, and then as an intermediary to the, to the uh, constellation. And uh, to me, it's like, well, let's just go ahead and invoke uh, the constellation itself. But again, that's not illogical. So I think all those approaches, and there's probably even other ways to do it, all make sense. I don't think that my way is right and these other ones are wrong, but I just wanted to explain how I do it. It's, as a practical matter, and then you can kind of find the way that resonates for you. So um, today I'm going to be talking about a brand new uh, fixed star talisman. This is the first time we've ever done this in bronze. I did previously do some in, uh, uh, etched mirrors, which were very interesting, but this is the first time we've actually had these widely available. This is Cetus, which is Latin for whale, but uh, is often seen as a sea monster. And so um, our key source for constellation talismans is uh, Albertus Magnus, who was a medieval sort of philosopher, um, sci you know, natural scientist. They didn't exactly have scientists in the modern sense now, um, but he did lots of writings. He's actually a saint. And he wrote a book called De Mineralibus on stones. And then as part of this, he sort of summarized the talismanic use of many uh, constellations. Um, probably uh, his sources were what are called lapidaries, which are books that explain the properties of various um, types of stones and gems. Um, but this is, a, this is probably, this Dominolibus and Albertus Magnus is a key source for uh, constellation talismans, and it's what I use predominantly. And so what he says is, he says the sea monster or whale Cetus is found, um, is, um, 
it, when you should engrave it as a sea serpent with a great hump. So that's what we've used as the image, is basically a sea serpent. And um, it confers good luck by land and sea, and prudence and amiability, and restores things that have been lost. So basically, this is, again, a wisdom talisman, um, also for good luck and for happiness, and the, the finding things, that's interesting. So it's interesting because, you know, in sort of pop, you know, ideas about magic, you have good luck talismans, um, but you don't see a lot of these in our actual, in our traditional sources. So this is one of the few talismans that actually is listed in our, one of our traditional sources as producing good luck. And I, I remember in, um, uh, when we did the uh, etched mirrors and we, you know, had, I think we had a, one of those uh, situations where I, I gave out the election and other people were making it. So we had sort of a group uh, use of the talisman that there were people that were coming back and talking about finding things. So that was interesting. There were actually were, I think, a report or two about finding lost things. And also um, we had a, a lot of positive feedback, I think, in, in as far as the, the good luck. So I think this is a, a, a very interesting talisman. It's, I really like the design. We've got a really cool um, sea serpent design for it in bronze. Um, these are the sort of the slim style, which I kind of like, um, and uh, not quite as thick as some of the other ones. This is sort of my preference. Um, but a really interesting, fascinating talisman. Like I said, wisdom and, uh, wisdom and good fortune uh, as well as that. I'm sort of, again, intrigued by the finding lost things. So um, basically the, uh, the fixed star that we use for this is uh, called Baton Katos, which is the, the belly of the sea monster. And it's at 22 Aries. So that was uh, culminating for the election of this and the moon was applying to a conjunction, I believe was the, the election. I'd have to look at the, the chart for that, which you can see on the, on the web page. So if you go to my website, if you're interested in this, you go to Renaissance Astrology, currently available talismans, and then you look under the fixed stars and you can find there that the constellation Cetus talisman. Now, this uh, video is being made in May of 2021. So if you're asking, you know, looking for these talismans, you know, a year later or six months later or something, they, they may not be available. We can only make a limited number of talismans at a time. We have to hit that election, right? We've got to get within that time range. Um, and we can only make a limited number of them and they inevitably will sell out. But go ahead and check that. Uh, check it out and take a look at it. And I, I think it's really interesting. I, you know, again, I'm, I'm kind of pushing the envelope here. Um, fixed stars are definitely cutting edge right now. I think more and more people that are interested in astrological magic are saying, you know, I want to try fixed stars. I've heard of them. And constellations just take that one step further. Uh, they're very similar, obviously, to fixed stars with the constellations being made up of fixed stars. But it just takes this whole... Um, astrological magic concept of the fixed star talisman and pushes it even further and allows us to have even more options in terms of the talismans that we make. Uh, so I was very excited to design these. That's one of the things that's the most fun for me to find the election for it and then uh, have them, them created uh, for me uh, by my student Muhammad Ajmal in Pakistan. And then getting them, it was really a kind of exciting to then uh, receive the, the talismans and then be able to have them available. So I wanted to announce that and again talk a little bit about the constellation talismans. So this is a, an angel that I have interacted with before and had had good results from, so I'm very happy to share that. Um, Cetus is also mentioned here in my uh, fixed star sign and constellation magic book. You can check that out get it on Amazon. You can also check it under books on the Renaissance Astrology website at the top. You can hit that uh, link to books and then the link to the fixed star book and you can see that this is actually a hardcover. This is a color edition. So it has a, everything in color hardcover which is very nice. Only available through the website. The paperback and then the Kindle edition are available uh, through Amazon if you're interested in that. So you know uh, very interesting you can get the Cetus Talismans if you act quickly. But also, I really am excited about sharing uh, my experiences with, uh, with Constellation Talismans, pushing that envelope and making these available to people and also getting people uh, turned on to the idea of making these talismans themselves and working with these, um, with these uh, astrological spirits. Because what's amazing about it is, is that we have such an incredibly huge full toolkit for astrological magic. There are so many different types of talismans that can be made. I mean, we think about 
but planets, but we're not limited to the seven planets. We have 15 fixed stars. We have another 17 or so constellations. We have 28 mansions, 36 decans, and then we have um, uh, uh, house-based talismans, which are almost infinite in the, in, the, in the different types of houses and configurations that can be done. So incredible opportunities to work with many, many different types of astrological talismans and really to accomplish all sorts of different purposes for many different things. And one of the things that I really like about this talisman, again, is, is this is a wisdom talisman. I said prudence. Uh, you know, I think it's very important for me to, to keep um, having a full stock of talismans for wisdom. It's maybe not the most popular goal for people, but I'm finding more and more people are wanting to enhance their magical skills or esoteric knowledge and their wisdom and spiritual uh, path through talismanic and magical means. And again, this is another talisman that's useful for those, for those purposes. So good, I hope you'll check out the Cetus Talismans on Renaissance Astrology and uh, dive in full force to working with uh, a constellation talismans.